All right, we'll go ahead and get started with Jeff Bookout. Jeff is a inspector that is specifically looking for water damage, mold issues, everything along those lines. Like I said, we had him out to our home recently, uh, to a home that we had put a put an offer in and we're thinking of buying, and uh, we're very thankful that it wasn't. Uh, wasn't uh, something that we moved forward with because Jeff found some serious issues in there that would have taken many tens of thousands of dollars to correct and saved us a lot of money and uh, has helped many of my patients as well to be able to figure out where their damaged areas are and what they need to do and again that can take anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a couple hundred thousand dollars depending on the house and and the property uh, but uh, fortunately most of the things that we can come up with for our patients are reasonable are easy to do and we can use the the mold plates that that JW can inspect and we can check those again and again and again to make sure that that process is is moving forward and things are are getting better so uh, here is Jeff thanks man so my name is Jeff Bookout uh, I am the owner of environmental specialist so a certified mold inspector and president of biobalance solutions which we'll get to in just a little bit but what's the next step once we know that a patient has mold in their body or whatever the case may be, uh, the next step is to evaluate the property, find out exactly where those problems are coming from and what to do to get those problems back under control. Uh, not to be outdone by JW, I actually was on my way back from Denver last week when my wonderful wife gave me a phone call and, uh, and unexpectedly instead of the, hey baby, how you doing, it was, I heard this loud pop and this loud pop is can you, everybody see this video on the screen, Ben? The picture, anyway. This is my hot water heater. The uh, filter system to it actually exploded, busted out the bottom, and she was asking me how to turn off the water to the entire property. So, not not a not not a pleasant phone call to take. But as you can see, uh, it flooded my daughter's bedroom. This is just the first stages of that. This is my wife's wonderful three-pound attack dog. Uh, but even in our case, the water was shut off within five minutes and dried out within 48 hours just because I have the dehumidifiers to be able to do that. In a lot of cases, these people in their own homes, when they have a leak, yeah, we got the leak stopped, we got the leak fixed, but still it wasn't done within that 48-hour period and we have mold growth. So the next step is actually the inspection phase. So that's where we come in with infrared cameras, moisture meters, boroscopes, VOC meters, basically do a full evaluation on that property, find out where those problems are coming from, give them the recommendations to get everything back under control. And so I included some slides of some of the things that we get to see in the properties. So give me just a second to get this up and going. Ben, I'm assuming everyone can see this, this presentation. Uh, yes, we can. Go ahead and, and uh, click on, um, is it a PDF? Okay, yeah, I don't think you can play that one. Yeah, that's fine. Just go through slide by slide there. That's fine. Well, that's how I had it set up. I've got it on PDF as well, so I'm going to, there we go. So a lot of times the, the medical treatment, which, which uh, you know, Ben uh, has talked about earlier, if the medical treatment is not working and all of a sudden it's a never-ending spiral that are never getting better then the property uh, has not been taken care of or these problems haven't been found so the medical treatment and the environment getting it cleaned up they go hand in hand because if they don't get that environment cleaned up the problems are just going to continue in their body so we come in and find out where these problems are actually coming from I hear it all the time Jeff I have a clean home, there's not mold inside of my property. Well, some things are obvious and some things are not. So we'll go through a few of these. So in this particular case, you can see the mold growth all over the wall itself. This is extremely obvious. There's a nice white teddy bear sitting here on the bed and mold growth is actually growing up the back side of that teddy bear. So extremely obvious in this case. This young man, he's actually five years old. Uh, he's in a diaper. He was wearing a pacifier when he met me at the door. The doctor actually had me do an evaluation on the property because he was going into seizures quite often. 
He's extremely happy about me taking this photo because he thinks I'm taking a photo of his race car bed. He was extremely happy about that, so he's racing to the end of the bed to actually smile. But I'm taking a picture of all the mold growth that's actually less than five feet away from where he sleeps at night. So some things are obvious, but this is one of those more difficult cases to find. This lady was actually going in for brain surgery. This is her sleep number bed. Once you get off the covering of the bed, you can see the heavy mold growth actually into the bed itself, into the pad itself, into the foam membranes on the side as well. So some things aren't quite as easy to find as you might think. One of those things that people overlook are also plants, as JW uh, addressed a little bit earlier. So we have contaminated soil that actually goes into the, the plants themselves or standing water into the plants. So sometimes a lot of these little things add up inside of the property. Here's another thing that was not obvious, but it was carpeting into the master bathroom itself. So this is right outside the master shower door leaking down the side of the door. This is actually the carpet had mold growth underneath it. The padding has mold growth into it. This is the subfloor where you see the stachybotrys growth as well. So carpeting in the bathrooms, uh, certainly not a great idea. Here was one of the, the pictures that was obvious. I had a hard time putting this one actually into the, the seminar, uh, kind of a personal case. Uh, the lady was 50 years old on an oxygen machine. The doctor uh, told her to contact me to find out what was going on in the property because he suspected mold growth. Sure enough, this was uh, a roof leak, uh, so mold damage into a lot of sheetrock. She actually had about a foot and a half of standing water into the crawl space itself. Uh, I, this was Friday at noon, roughly. I left the house. Uh, less than four hours after I left, she actually went to a breathing fit, could not come out of it, and she actually passed away. So <clears throat> some other non-obvious things. Uh, this is actually a dryer vent venting up into the attic causing excessive moisture content. Obviously, it's a fire issue as well. Uh, but so much moisture content going into an attic definitely causes problems there. Here's another, what I call it, <clears throat> a hidden mold issue. This is a dirt floor crawl space. You can see from the discoloration, the soil is actually wet at the time that I'm here extreme musty odor into this area as well. So obviously this is underneath the house, but we have an HVAC system here. So assuming that an HVAC system is a great unit, it is 95% contained, which means that 5% of the air that's around it actually communicates with the rest of the house. So every time they turn on their air conditioner or heating system, at least 5% of this contaminated air gets cross-contaminated with the rest of the property. Swamp coolers, especially in Colorado, I see a lot of these, uh, which is an extreme mold pit on several levels. So one, we have standing water that actually sits into the bottom of the unit itself, causing a mold problem. Mold will actually grow up into these filters that sit on the side. Last but not least, we're pumping a roughly 90% humidity into the house at one time, causing excess of mold growth in people's homes. Some of the sickest people I get to see is actually swamp coolers in dirt floor crawl spaces. Is the humidity above 50 percent? So in a lot of cases, even in Colorado, uh, last week I ran into a couple of cases in Colorado where the humidity was well above 50 percent, well above 60 percent in a couple areas. Just excess of moisture sitting against the foundation due to the heavy rains over the last couple of years, the boulder flood a couple of years ago. So uh, humidity is definitely an issue. Even in Oklahoma where I actually currently live, uh, we have an average humidity of 45% and above, which can cause problems as well. I have two dehumidifiers in my own, own home that help keep humidity under control. This is an infrared camera, uh, which is one of the tools that we have in our bag to find hidden leaks. Uh, we see the picture on the right, uh, which is what I see with the naked eye. No visible water staining, no visible mold growth. But you look at it under infrared and all these dark blue areas, is actually roof leaks that are coming uh, from the ceiling above. And she had approximately 30 different roof leaks in this living room area. The other thing is uh, moisture meters. They help you determine if there is moisture content behind a wall or how much moisture content actually exists in whatever 
particular material that we're looking at. In this particular case, this house had flooded, and this is roughly four and a half to five feet high. You can see that there's still excessive moisture content in this sheetrock, which will tell me that <clears throat> there's going to be mold growth behind this wall. So some things are obvious anywhere, some things are not. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is evaluate these properties and find out actually where these problems are coming from. I also encourage any doctors that uh, have these evaluations done or have these patients do these evaluations, also share this information with the doctor itself. Because a lot of cases they will say, well, yes, Jeff came in or an inspector came in, this is what he found, and a lot of times they haven't made any of their corrections. So staying on top of those and being in communication with those patients on what was actually found in their environment is, is a huge help. But that's the first step. So obviously you all get to see a lot of these uh, conditions medical-wise, uh, just a short list of some of the problems that I get to see. Uh, and obviously there are several, several other items as well. So now that we know where these problems are, the next step is rip out, remove, replace those damaged materials, treat the property if it need needs to be happened as well. We get a lot of times, uh, well Jeff, I, I poured bleach on it, uh, which is definitely not a method that, that uh, I would suggest anyone to do. A couple of reasons why. One, the EPA actually used to tell people to use bleach, they no longer do that, uh, but bleach does a great job on viruses and bacteria, but Clorox themselves will tell you that they only kill two different types of molds. Out of about 100,000 species, they kill two. One of those is a type of athlete's foot fungus, so now we're down to one. And it will actually, or Clorox will tell you that it will only work on hard, non-porous surfaces. So a couple other problems that I have bleach is actually the toxicity. So you have a medical patient that has a lot of chemical sensitivities as well. They will have issues with the bleach. Uh, but also the white phosphate residue that bleach can leave behind is actually a mold fertilizer. Uh, so Definitely uh, do not suggest to use bleach or any other type of harsh chemicals. So that brings us to what actually do we need to do or what products that we can use to get mold growth back under control inside the property. So the first thing we look at, uh, which is the BioBalance solution, we want a product that has a material safety data sheet of zero. So rule number one, do our clients no harm. Uh, so we have a product that goes out, dries out mold spores naturally, gets those mold spore counts back under control. There's a couple different ways to do that which are extremely cost effective. So this is what we call a do-it-yourself kit, which is the same product that I use commercially, but in a do-it-yourself version. So we have two different kits. One is a large kit, one is a small kit. Small kit is a small fogger, comes with a quart of the solution. That quart will do approximately a thousand square feet. Simple, easy, do-it-yourself instructions. I actually have some YouTube videos as well that will help guide someone if they've never used a fogger before. The large kit is a large fogger with a gallon of solution that does up to 4,000 square feet. So definitely a very cost-effective way to get uh, someone's problems back inside of the property. Because one of the things that we get to see is when they have a mold or a traditional mold remediation company come in, Let's say that problem was in that men's bathroom. They seal off that men's bathroom. They take the air that's in there, use negative air pressure or air scrubbers into that area, make sure the air that's in that bathroom is clean. But they do not address any of the air that's throughout the rest of the property. So more than likely that mold problem had been going on for quite some period of time. We have an HVAC system that carries those mold spores to the rest of the property, but none of the rest of the property was dealt with. Uh, so this is that way to deal with the rest of the property. So the second way is a lot of mold remediation companies will use biocides, germicides, fungicides, ozone in high doses to get rid of mold. Those ways do work to get rid of mold, but with a medical patient, we find that they will have more reaction to those chemicals than the mold itself. I'll give you an example, your biocides and your germicides have a 7 to 10 year half-life basically means that that chemical is at half strength in that house for the next seven to ten years. So you have an HLA gene patient or an IgG positive patient or even an APOE patient that has some brain barrier issues. Now they're around those chemicals, harsh chemicals, for the next seven to ten years. 
so how the fogger is used, uh, we we go out through through the entire property, uh, basically starting with bedrooms first, kind of giving you an example. Here's a picture of the fogger actually going off. You go into your master bedroom, set that fogger just inside the door, let it go off approximately five to ten minutes, open up that door, you should not be able to see your master bed sitting in the middle of that bedroom. That's the consistency or thickness you want each room inside the property. And you just take that room to room throughout the house. I do suggest that they open up all their drawers, their cabinets, their closets. They're again a material safety data sheet of zero, so it's not harmful to them whatsoever. But anywhere that a mold spore can hide, I want this fog to be able to get into. So let it into your belongings. There's no cleanup afterwards. Uh, it's the safest product out there to be able to use inside of the property. So once everything is done, we ask that it be left undisturbed for 12 hours. That way, let the, let the fog do its job inside of that property. Then it's okay to re-enter the house. But the big thing is the long-term conclusion is that these home repairs, finding where these issues are coming from, rip out, remove, and replace any damaged materials or stop any of these leaks that are ongoing, they go hand-in-hand -hand with the treatment of the property. Then when we're treating the, the patient on a medical level, now all of a sudden you see these dramatic changes in their body because they're not going back into this environment anymore. And the great thing about this is through the plates, through immunolytics, you can get the plates extremely cheap, test your house often. My particular case, I treat my house every year no matter what. My youngest daughter does have the HLA gene. My oldest daughter has an APOE carrier 4. So I know these issues uh, can be a problem in my own home. So I treat my own house every year no matter what, keep things under control in my house. I get plates and plate my house often. So that way, just like JW, you monitor your house. You know when there's a problem. Now it's just a matter of finding where that problem is. The website for BioBalance is biobalancenow.com. My personal cell phone number is 580-574-1373. Feel free to call me or email me anytime. The email is also on that website from Bot Balance for me as well. If you need that contact information, I'll be happy to get that to you at the end of this presentation as well. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to go over them at the end of the presentation. So, Ben, that's all I have for now. All right. Wonderful, Jeff. Thank you so much for that information. Uh, so, again, I put the Jeff's number and we'll put the, the web address up there as well. And uh, again, this this just ties everything in together because as a practitioner, we can sit there and look and say, oh, well, this patient has this symptom. We, we see that they have that deficiency in them and we need to give them this supplement. We need to do this therapy. But if we're not dealing with that underlying cause, that actual mold in their house, in their school, in their, uh, in their work setting, in their car, whatever it is, then we're going to be just trying to cover symptoms, cover symptoms, cover symptoms. So you know, for my family, for our office, everything, we start with, with this cause and we say, okay, where are those, those damaged areas? What do we need to do? How can we drop this, uh, this total number? Let's get out the plates. Let's retest. Let's make sure we're getting the changes. So Jeff, thank you so much for putting that together. And uh, if you have any questions at all, Jeff is available. I was up uh, camping at, at 12,000 feet this past weekend and Jeff dropped me a message and we were speaking at the top of a mountain and he was on a Saturday and he was going over all the all the information on the house so he's a, a wonderful guy and can help you guys a lot with things so we're going to take a couple minutes here and Kurt uh, talking about the APOE genetic test will be back in a couple minutes thanks Jeff <laughs>